Well, there you go. This is Blog Talk Radio, and this is the K factor, where K equals kindness, and the factors are all the things that lead to it. And here in December, we've rebranded a bit, so it'll forever be <clears throat> a little tickle in my throat there. It'll forever be the K factor and be about kindness. But the shift is to add Partners in Excellence Media to this theme. Why? Because what I found this year was my co-hosts and I really are the news. And what is the news? The news is everything lovely and wonderful that we can bring to you about you that's good for you. So I called it the influencers at Partners in Excellence Media. And the richness of what it is that has happened here in this zone this year since really the summer, June, July, I started recruiting friends of mine who are business associates as well, who I absolutely love and adore to come to this platform and join me to spread kindness, to find it, to embrace it, and I think each of them are already doing that on a daily basis. And that brings me tremendous joy. And joy is the other thing that we're spreading. Now, normally on this episode, it would be Dr. Joy Martina and I side by side doing this show. Now, the good news is that I'm here. The other news is that she is not. But the wonderful news is, is that she is with family. And talk about spreading joy and having kindness. <coughs> Excuse me. Spreading joy and having kindness everywhere. When you have a family that is functional, where love is strong and people are coming together, particularly this year, right? In 2020, when even beloveds are keeping a distance because of the fear of this virus. When family has an opportunity to get together, I don't care what else is on the schedule. Values and priorities are in the right place when what you want to do is shelf everything else and say, you know, my heart is beating inside of my chest and my thoughts are totally aligned with spending time with those people in my world who have forever been in my world. And so let's do that. So today, one of the things that I wanted to talk about in terms of our show here is the ways in which, <clears throat> I need to look at my notes, the ways in which we have got such a supreme opportunity here in 2020 to do something very different because the year has been so different for each and every one of us. So what could we do differently? How about if what we do differently is we use this incubation time, and even if you're isolated as you're insulated, turn it on its ear and make it be something so much richer than what you've ever known before. When was the last time, if ever, in your life, you've had a time to focus on your self-care? And when I mean your self-care, I'm not just talking about your hair and your skin and getting a massage. All of that is absolutely essential and lovely. But let's take it a couple of steps further. When was the last time in your life that you really focused on the joy in your heart? The joyful thoughts in your mind? The consumption of joy in your heart? and the way in which you spill over into your life and out into the world, really truly like a fountain of water and just allowing it to permeate everywhere you go. Now is an opportune time for you to do that because we all have the capacity in us. And as we're sitting here in isolation and being told we can't go, we can't be free, 
we can't make those choices. We still have our mind. We still have our heart. And everything is possible through the mind. You know, when you stop and think about the mind, we have the entire universe right here in our head. And we feel about it right here in the middle of our chest, under our sternum, that wonderful protective bone. And we can travel through every memory we've ever created. And we can use our imagination to take any story in our head and edit it for our joyfulness for the depth of understanding that we have and that we want to have about any situation that we have gone through in this life. And if what we do is we commit, whether it's through prayer and or meditations, there's a lot of blending of the two, absolutely. If we commit to the moments every day where we focus in on self and we extend it into the universe, to our creator. <clears throat> we have an opportunity to write a new story, to write a new story that is directed and produced by us, where we're the leading actor. <laughs> we are the entertainment. And we build in our cast of characters however we want. That's what I've done here. That's what I've done here this year on Blog Talk Radio. I've rewritten my story. I've built a new cast of characters, and I invite them in here to have their influence on what it is that's happening in my day, in my life, and hopefully my influence in their life means something right back. And then we spill over in your direction to bring you something that maybe you've never had before. Maybe you've never thought about it before. The idea of having joyfulness. You know, when I first started thinking about that, I thought, wait a second. Happiness. Happiness is at one level, right? But that inner joy is something that just permeates your whole spirit. It feels more grounded. And, and happiness absolutely is a wonderful feeling and it's kind of a fluttering out here in the periphery a bit. What do you do that's really grounding, that makes you feel solid, makes you feel confident, puts your image of yourself where it is you really want it to be? You know, people have asked me over the years, what's the difference between self-concept, self-image, and self-esteem? Well, listen to this for a minute and tell me if this resonates with you. Your concept of yourself is this thought that you have about who you are. And the image of yourself formulates from that. You can have a play on words and say one came before the other, but this is just one explanation. And when you look into the mirror or into the camera, that is an image of you. And when you look there, you might see something different than what everyone else sees. But that is your image. That is your self-image that you see there. And it's based on the concept that you have of yourself in your mind. And where your self-esteem comes from, it is about how much do you value you, that concept of you, that image of you. Your self-esteem, if it's high, your confidence is really high and you radiate that. It's beautiful. <laughs> and when we feel really low, not so much. And as a matter of fact, if you want to know more about those kinds of things, start thinking about this. What about your frequency? The frequency of you, the vibe that you have. We've used these terms very casually in our 
daily language. Oh, that person's got a great vibe. I love being around them. Oh, that person's such a downer. The vibe is really off. Or gee, I really feel bad because they're just down these days. You know, we speak in these colloquialisms and actually they have deep rooted meaning behind them. So like what? Well, in part, frequency. Do you know that every emotional state that we have has got a certain vibration to it? We can actually measure it. And when we do that, we can change the frequency. Now, when I first started studying the science of this, I was in graduate school and an associate of mine was looking at depression and dance. She happened to love dancing. And she had a hunch, a hypothesis, that dancing could make anyone feel better. And so she started doing the research, looking at dance and dance therapy and movement in cases of depression. And what did she find? That she was absolutely right. And why? Because when you change your physical state, you change your mental state, you change your frequency, you change your vibration. It's a beautiful thing. So in the midst of all of that, I bring to you today peace and joy and kindness and make one request. Get up and dance and move and feel your vibration raise into happiness. And on that note, it's a short episode today. I'm going to leave you on that and say have a wonderful day. And we'll see you again here next time. Peace out.